What's up you guys, Sergio from Atrick with a live duel between Cyber Dragon and my buddies Blue Eyes. And you know, I just wanted to bring this live match so you guys can see how Cyber Dragon and Blue Eyes play. Let's get into it. So I start off with accidentally activating Cyber Repair Plan, giving away some information. And then I accidentally realized that, yep, I wanted to activate Pot of Desire. So I pay my 10 in the hope that he doesn't have that Ash Blossom to negate my card and actually, you know, make me take a loss on banishing those 10. But it actually goes through, which makes me very happy. But then that drone Lockbird comes flying in saying, nope, no more searches for you, good man. That's all you got to do. And at this point, I just decided to pass turn because, you know, discarding and summoning Galaxy Soldier would have just been like a neg at this point because you want to get your most out of your card. So, you know, Galaxy Soldier being able to search that other Galaxy Soldier, although I did have targets to discard. So then he draws into his turn, you know, it's, it's he's up now. And I remember seeing now through the camera, he has a Melody Awakening Dragons. He doesn't know what I have, but I have a Valor and an Ogre at this point. So he activates that uh, Melody, which in my opinion discarding that uh call by the grave is pretty risky because if i would have ashed i don't know if that was his only call by the grave so melody resolves uh he's able to add into blue eyes white dragon and alternative which is just the alternative is just such a good card for blue eyes because just being able to reveal that blue eyes and special summoning that alternative that 3000 beat stick who can potentially give up his attack to pop a card on the field is just so good in my opinion easier for rank plays and things like that so that's exactly what he does. He special summons that Blue Eyes, has that 3,000 body, goes into battle phase and slaps me across the face for 3,000 damage direct uh, because I just didn't really want to commit anything because of that drone Lockbird. Uh, so I take 3,000 to the face, main phase two, uh, sets one and decides to pass it off to me. So at this point, I'm just, you know, seeing what I can do, draw for turn. He has a Valor in his hand and a Monster Reborn, which is so crucial for Blue Eyes just being able to revive something later but now I activate that cyber repair plan or was it a cyber emergency I think it was a cyber emergency so I activate that cyber emergency to add the uh, cyber dragon for my deck to my hand I should still have that cyber repair plan in hand uh, so yeah cyber emergency is pretty much the rota for cyber dragons and at this point, I discard Galaxy Soldier by discarding a Cyber Dragon. He immediately hits that with a Valor, which is the correct thing to do. You want to negate Galaxy Soldier so he doesn't get that search. And now I go ahead and activate that Cyber Repair Plant since I do have a Cyber Dragon in my grave, giving me the ability to add any Cyber Dragon, like any Light Machine time from my deck to my hand. So I add Core, and Core is just the core of this deck in that he can search any Cyber Spell or Trap. Normal Summon Core, Core activates its effect. I already baited that Valor, so that's good. Uh, I'm able to resolve uh, Core's effect, adding me that Cyber Rev system, which is the only card I can activate at this point, which is searchable by Cyber Dragon Core, which is the reason I did it. So at this point, I look like I feel like I'm in a pretty good standing. I really don't have that many more plays since he did negate my uh, my my Galaxy Soldier's effect to add another Galaxy Soldier. I didn't want to revive that. Uh, that cyber dragon to go into infinity for reasons you guys will see later because in my personal opinion seeger when it comes down to beating like down is just so good because he's able to uh to just boost himself by 4200 but then you know i'm able to activate overload fusion and at this point i'm asking if he has any response and ca he called by the graves instantly one of my cyber dragons which you know kind of sucks at this point because i was looking to banish those two to special summon chimera tech uh, rampage dragon and just try to otk that way but I have to resolve Overload Fusion since I do have enough targets on the field and in the grave. So unfortunately, I do have to banish my Cyber Dragon and my Cyber Dragon Seeker since, again, I do have enough targets to resolve the card. And if you could resolve the card, you must resolve the card. I can't take it back at this point. So then we have a uh, Cyber Ram uh, Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon, which is such a good card for Cyber Dragons. But it just isn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to go Seeker and Rampage and then Seeker... Uh, like boost him up by f to 4200 and him have two, uh, two attacks by dumping cards in the main phase so then i activate that effect to send two light mission 10 mods from my deck to the grave to gain that many attacks so usually i want to send a core and i want to send something i can revive later so i most likely send it a cyber dragon so you know that cyber rev system is live so what i decide to do is i still have that cyber rev system live so i'm just i'm just thinking about plays to do and just looking back at it uh Making Infinity would have been the better play, but again, he did banish my Cyber Dragon, so that kind of sucks. 
and I just decided to opt for Regeki and then make the most out of those three attacks that he has. Uh, bring back a Cyber Dragon, you know, Cyber Dragon Veer. And then Rampage is able to deal 6300 since he is 2100 and can attack three times. So I smack him for 63, I believe. So let's do the math real quick. Leaving him at a whopping 1700. And then I fall short just a little bit with Cyber Dragon Veer for 1600 because even though he is 1100, he does boost himself up by 500 attack and defense. So, you know, that just is a little bit unfortunate there. So he's at 100 life points left. So he has the possibility for a comeback. And this is just that Cyber Dragon playstyle, being able to OTK, being able to just do a lot of damage, push for a lot of damage. But now looking back at the replay, reviving, sending a... I could have just sent a Cyber Dragon and revived it with Rev System, and that could have been game. But I pass it off to him. He has 100 life points left. You guys can tell by the footage, he has a Monster Reborn in hand. So he could potentially go into a Link play, or into an XZ play, I apologize. So then... He just basically, you know, asking what happened in the grave, what's, you know, what's, what's live, any effects in the grave he has to worry about. I say no, except the core. So then he pa I pass off to him, to him, activates that uh, monster reborn to bring back that alternative since he was summoned properly. Alternative effect at this point to pop my cyber, my chimera tech rampage dragon. I decided to check his grave arch if there's anything I can do. At this point, there really isn't, but I remember do having that ghost ogre, which was kind of a bad decision now that I look back on it. I should have activated Baylor, but just being able to destroy that uh, alternative, you know, giving me like, you know, that could have like that, just being able to get rid of it so I don't have to deal with it next turn, in my personal opinion, was better. So that's exactly what I did in activating that ogre. So then he goes into a, a Sage with Eyes of Blue, I tries to activate that effect, and now I activate that Baylor because, you know, I just felt like not giving him any ads would be the best thing to do. So then he passes his turn, finishing off with the Link Karibo. So then it's off to me, and at this point, I feel like I have it in the bag because I just contact fuse with that Link Karibo, bring out Chimera Tech Mega Fleet, which is now 2400 body, and then just body him for game. So that pretty much wraps it up for game one. Cyber Dragons with that easy, well, not an easy win, but it was more of like a, it was more of a slower game, and I, I just opened up a little bit better than he did. So. That pretty much wraps it up for game one. And what pretty much wrapped it was being able to uh, activate the Ogre and the Veiler uh, accordingly and hitting what I needed to hit to, you know, just kind of wrap up the duel now. So, you know, just some, some quick uh, preparation for match two. And I think he opted to go second, I believe. Just checking the camera quality, making sure everything is okay. And... And so we're, we're hitting out, we're starting off again with game two. Uh, I just decided to do games one and two, not necessarily three, because I feel like that's just too much for it. So yeah, we're just doing some too much unnecessarily, unnecessarily, unnecessary shuffling at this point. And he makes me go first, which Cyber Dragons never really want to do. You always want to go second. He opens up with double Valor, uh, trade in, and you know, I don't remember what was in my hand, but for a Cyber Dragon, it probably wasn't too good uh, for going first. But I do see a... Oh, actually, he decides to opt first. Then he goes with Sage. Activates that Sage effect. And I'm thinking, do I want to let it go through? I don't think I really have anything to stop it. So he's able to, you know, resolve it. Adds that White Stone of Legend. Which is, you know, just such a good card. Because it gets, it gets you a Blue Eyes once it hits the grave. And then card with cards like Melody and, you know, Cards of Continents. You know, oh, there you go. Melody, Awakening Dragon. Discarding the Stone of Legend. Hitting him with the Ash on the Chainlink 2, but he's still able to resolve the second one. The Melody, of course, so he's able to add the... Uh, oh, no, I'm able to hit the Melody because the uh, the Graveyard effect would be a separate chain. So he's only able to add that Blue Eyes. And I believe he activates that trade in, which is actually what he needed. Discards that Blue Eyes, draws two. He drew into another Melody, I think. And I don't think Melody's once per turn, so we might see it resolve at this point. Uh, I I'm, I think I'm completely out of hand traps. I think hitting the first Melody was like the best I can do. So oh, Return of the Dragon Lord, not bad. So he's able to bring back Blue Eyes White Dragon, and he goes for a Link One play. And obviously it's, it's a Link Kariba, you know, just to provide that protection for Blue Eyes. But what Adi keeps forgetting is that 
Cyber Dragons just being able to contact fuse with monsters in the extra monster zone just make them so crucial. Just being able to out big bodies like for basically free, you know, if you're going second. So then he's just like checking his extra deck, seeing if there's anything he can do before passing off turn, you know, and then he activates that melody at this point. And discarding the Valor was a pretty risky, you know, thing because you always want to try to stop the core in Cyber Dragons. You want to Ash or Valor the core. You don't want to let its effect resolve because it'll just get you too much advantage. But at this point, you know, he uh, he resolves the second melody, which he did draw off of that Trayden. And then he's able to reveal that Blue Eyes and then special summon that alternative. You know, and that's just, you know, easy rank 8s right there, you know. Cards like Hope Harbinger provide negation is just so good. And I believe that's exactly what he goes into. Yep, Hope Harbinger. And then him being able to negate a spell without detaching for cost, you know, just being able to take it is just, you know, so good. So then he passes off turn to me. And at this point, he has a Veiler and a Droll in hand. So that puts me at a very, like, very bad situation. So then I just start off by activating Cyber Emergency, which is the Rota for Cyber Dragons. This is a must of. It's a it's a three of in any Cyber Dragon deck because it's just it's just Rota for Cyber Dragons. Being able to search any Cyber Dragon monster or even Cyber Elton is just so good. So it just you know makes it like you're playing six core six hertz any card you want to get you can just basically get it if it has the Cyber Dragon name. But then I just opt to get the the regular Cyber Dragon itself because I'm just gonna be able to special summon and out that Link Karibo. So, I pass it off to him. And then, thinking about some plays, yep, I, I, I absolutely have to go into Special Summoning Cyber Dragon. Uh, contact Fusing with Link Karibo, you know, so there's no protection on Hope Harbinger. And, yep, go into Chimera Tech Mega Fleet, which since I use two materials, he's at 2400 attack, which is pretty beefy in my personal opinion. Any monster that's like a free Special Summon, we haven't even committed a normal summon yet, and he's 2400 attack. It's just good in my opinion. Then I go into Cyber Eltonin. By since I like by banishing like one light machine type monster, he's only at 500 attack. But the reason that I did that is because it outs his Hope Harbinger without me needing to do like much, and he can't negate it because Hope Harbinger only negates spells and traps, I believe. So he isn't able to uh, stop my my Cyber Elton, or I think he protected it with Return of the Dragon Lord. Yeah, yeah, he protected with Return of the Dragon Lord, so at this point, you know, I don't really have to worry about much. Uh, adding Cyber Repair Plant, and now I have a core. And then I just uh, link link 2 into Cyber Dragon Seeger, which is like an easy link 2. All you need is one Cyber Dragon and one Machine Time Monster. Then activating that, I most likely going to go into the battle phase. And I make the rookie mistake of activating the Cyber Repair Plant. Just giving that Hope Harbinger an easy negate. So he pretty much takes it. And I just ogre the uh, Hope Harbinger, which was... Oh, shit. Yeah, he had... he. I don't know what the interaction with that Cyber Ultimate was now that I look back. He should have left the field when Ultimate... Hope Harbinger should have left the field when Ultimate was happening, but I, that was just a misplay, I'm saying. But then I just wasted way too many cards in activating that Regeki. Yeah, I basically wasted three cards to try to out that whole Harbinger when I could have just attacked over it with Cyber Dragon Seeger. Uh, and then finally, I just guess I want to do damage. So, uh, attack with Cyber Dragon Seeger for a 2100 attack. I always remember that his effect to boost himself up or boost any monster with 2100 more attack only works. And if like, he hasn't declared an attack and it doesn't deal damage. So now it's his turn. He draws a call by the grave, which is unfortunate. Because now I have the body on the field, I active. I will. I draw into core, normal summon core, which is just such a good card to top deck because it can get me any like cyber speller trap, which could get me my Rota, which can get me my monster reborn for cyber dragon, which could just keep me going. So he called by the grave my core, which is the right thing to do. So then I just enter battle and attack for another 2100 and 400 by core. equaling a total of 2500 so you guys can see i'm in like i'm in the lead at this point but then he top decks into an alternative so he reveals blue eyes specials alternative and at this point it's a pretty scary move because he knows he can't beat over the seeger but he can just pop it using all uh, alternatives effects so that pretty much is the end of seeger at this point unfortunately alternative can't attack but he has the big body so i really can't out it so at this point it's just checking my grave see if there's anything and just go into defense mode you know play that defense so 
Uh, that's exactly what I do by shifting Cyber Dragon Corn to defense in a few seconds. I don't really know what I was thinking at this point. Maybe there was something I could have done. I, don't, I really don't remember what I like, top decked into or what I drew into. But I'm pretty sure the best thing to do at this point was just switch core to defense and pass turn. Which is exactly what I do after like so many minutes. That, that could have been like a, a call for slow play. And Jesus, does he top deck again into soul charge. Adi is literally one of the luckiest players I know after a few of my other friends. Uh, he just... Against me, he just top decks like like it's easy, like it's breakfast, you know. So he top decks into a soul charge, and soul charge, in my personal opinion, just wins you games when you like use it late turn when your graveyard is like full enough to use it. Yeah, so he activates soul charge. He has three thousand four hundred life points, so he could basically revive three. Uh, the only downside to soul charge is he doesn't uh, get his battle phase. But at this point, you know, he just. Paid a thousand for Hope Harbinger is gonna most likely pay a thousand for another alternative and another blue eyes, and just like like smack my face in next turn, just basically tossing my salad. That, that's gonna be it for the game. But yeah, he goes into a. Uh, he only pays two thousand, which was a little risky in my opinion. But then you know he's the blue eyes player, and I, I really don't I really don't know like what the best play. Just Hope Harbinger alone could have probably taken it, cause just the big body and just you know. Another, like maybe another blue eyes he could have gone into and gone into an XC play, but I'm pretty sure he secured game. So he link ones for Link Karibo. Oh, he tributes a stone and then activates the stone effects and leaves the graveyard. You know, and that just kind of shows how important Link Karibo is in the deck. Being able to just link one your stones away and then getting their effects instantaneously or at the end phase if it's Stone of Ancients is just so good in blue eyes. And now he has two blue eyes in hand. And then he just passes off turn to me. Uh, no, he activates the alternative effect to pop my core. So, you know, now it's my turn. I draw for turn. And I think the only thing I really have live at this point is the uh, core in the graveyard. So that's what I'm most likely going to do. I'm going to banish the core to special summon a cyber dragon from the deck. Which, again, just showcases how important core really is for this deck. And how it keeps you alive for most of the turn. Not only does it, like, search for your good spells and traps, your good cyber dragon spells and traps. But it just, like, has a graveyard effect where you can banish and it just... It just fits in so well with the Cyber Dragon playstyle. So I special summon in defense, and I'm just, at this point, I'm, like, hoping to, like, not lose, you know, that right away. So now I pass off turn to him, and he top decks it, uh, uh, one for one. So then he just attacks with alternative. Oh, no, he activates the effect of uh, alternative to pop my Cyber Dragon. So this is still main phase, and he brings out the stone by discarding blue eyes. So right here, he's just uh, he just brought out another stone of angels, which will just like synchros for nine, and which later he can go for like like better like it'll just give him a monster at the end phase, which is just ultimately better for blue eyes. But he, you know, oh no, he banishes the stone right there to add an alternative to hand, and this is what pretty much got him game. Alternative. Uh, Hope Harbinger and the uh, Spirit is just easily 8,000 right there. Yep, automatically brings me down a game. And that, that that way just, you know, shows he just brought it back from the dead. That pretty much wraps it up for game two. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to check out the deck profile, I have them in the like videos. So feel free to check them out. Thank you guys so much. Catch you guys in the next one. Sesma is out.